Hi everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and today we are going to dye some cotton yarn with commercial acid dyes. <laughs> that just feels wrong to say. It feels super, super wrong to say because in general, acid dyes are meant for protein-based fibers like wool, alpaca, silk, mohair, things like that. And typically you cannot use acid dyes to dye cotton yarn. But I say this with an asterisk because there is a type of cotton yarn called dyelicious that has been chemically modified so that the cellulose fibers can better take up dyes, which includes acid dyes. Now, I have not tried this with commercial acid dyes yet, but in a previous video, I did investigate and tried dyeing some of this with Kool Aid and it worked well. Not as well as the superwash wool, which had a much deeper um, color from similar proportions of dye to fiber, but it's unquestionably dyed and worked really, really well, especially when compared to just a regular cotton yarn where all of the color, except for a slight tint, washed out. So before we jump on in, I want to preface this that saying I do not recommend dyeing cotton with food coloring or acid dyes unless the manufacturer specifically says that you can. And so I don't know what the modification was to this dyelicious. They say that it, whatever chemicals they used to modify it have then been rinsed out. So it's really just cotton that is left behind, but cotton with an asterisk, I guess, because it's modified, right? Uh, so. I don't know too much about the chemistry there, but I do know that it works and it's fairly fun to play with. I will put some links in the video description about Dialicious so you can go and read more. And I go through the website and talk more about this in my previous video. But we need to investigate all these claims, right? So that's why I started with Kool-Aid because that felt like a very chemist place to start. And now let's try commercial acid dyes. And there's some other things I'd like to do with this in the future that include looking at fiber reactive dyes with vinegar and with soda ash, even though the websites or the listings say that you don't need additional chemicals for dyeing the yarn, but when I did this with, with Kool-Aid, it did feel like you wanted to have vinegar present. So for all of what they say about the yarn, I would make sure to follow the instructions from the dyes that you're using, uh, just for, I think, the best results. For example, on the yarn page, they recommend just mixing your dyes with warm tap water, letting it sit, and then washing it. But today, I am going to treat this yarn like I would treat any other yarn I wanted to dye with acid dyes. And so that is how we're going to proceed, and I will be setting up the pot with vinegar and heating it on the stovetop. So that's our plan, and let's jump into it. One other asterisk with dialicious dyeing is that the fiber has been treated with some kind of fugitive dye that you they want you to rinse out before you go and dye it with other fibers. So you should wash it with warm soapy water in advance. And I did this yesterday actually with the same skein that I dyed with the Kool-Aid. And this has been soaking in the water overnight, so we probably have a better saturation than we did with the original. Uh, and I've added a reusable nylon zip tie to just help keep the skein in order. Now today, I'm only planning on dyeing the skein. I'm not gonna do, s ooh, now I'm questioning myself. Shoot, okay, I'm gonna go get a skein of stroll. I think I do want to do a side-by-side -side with, uh, with a wool yarn, and let me explain why. One other thing the Dyelicious website said was that you should use a quarter of the amount of dye for dyeing yarn, as you might just from instructions, and I think that this is partly because if you're using maybe fiber reactive dyes to get a certain color, you need to use a lot more dye. And since this accepts dye more readily, maybe that is why they give that conclusion. And with fiber reactive dyes and tie dyes and those explorations in the future, we will compare this side by side with some untreated cotton. But in this case, and what I observed yesterday is that although I could dye the yarn with Kool-Aid, the final color is less vibrant, even though there is the same amount of dye proportionally there in the fiber. And so I would like to do a similar comparison here today. 
I am going to quickly pre-soak a skein of Knit Pick Stroll fingering weight yarn. This yarn is 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon, and dyes super, super beautifully. I'll add more water to this in just a second. Um, but I'll do this in two different pots so we can aim for a similar depth of shade <laughs> on the yarn. But this actually is going to be a really good example to talk about depth of shade because depth of shade isn't necessarily about the absolute color on the yarn, but it is a reference to how many grams of dye you use per grams of fiber. So the plan is to aim for the same on both of these, but the actual color that I hypothesize we see will appear much darker on the wool than it does on the cotton. Okay, Chemnitz fans, you will appreciate this, but my uh, microwave light turned on, which is amazing. So I set up two dye baths here, one with eight cups of tap water and one with 16 cups of tap water. Uh, this will help us keep the concentrations of everything really, really similar. And with the cotton, we have 50 grams, and with the stroll, we have 100 grams. Now, since we're dyeing with acid dyes, we're gonna add some white vinegar. I am going to add two tablespoons of white vinegar per eight cups of water. So that's two for this pot and four for the back one. One other note, my tap water runs slightly acidic. So if your tap water is a bit alkaline, you might need to be adding more vinegar than I do in all of my videos. Uh, but these proportions work for me, and with some trial and error, you can figure out what works best for you. Now for the dye. We are going to use Dharma Acid Dyes in True Black. And I have mixed a 1% stock solution five months ago. And so from that stock, I'm going to add 50 milliliters, or the equivalent of 0 0.5 grams, to our cotton pot, and 100 milliliters of the same stock solution for our uh, stroll fingering weight yarn, which would be a total of one gram of dye. All of the tools and equipment we are using today are dedicated for dyeing yarn and aren't used for food. And if you wanna learn more about the yarn and my favorite pots and pans and things like that, I do have links and affiliate links down in the video description. Now, uh, the amount of dye, even though I mixed up the stock very accurately, does have, again, a tiny asterisk because sometimes in older dye stocks, things can crash out of solution and they can be a little more concentrated than we thought. But what we do know is that the proportion of color to water and color to yarn is the same since we had 50 milliliters in here and 100 milliliters in there. I do have a video, The Math of Yarn Dyeing, that talks more about depth of shade and stock solutions and how to calculate the amount of dye you need to get a desired shade of yarn. But it's worth pointing out again that we are adding the exact same amount of dye per grams of fiber. F 0.5 grams of dye for 50 grams of fiber or one gram of dye for 100 grams of fiber. So those proportions are the same, which means that our depth of shade, assuming all the dye absorbs on both, is the same but they're gonna look different. And really, that is to, to, turn, to get the same shade with different fiber contents, often you might need different amounts of dye. You might need less with wool, more with silk, and things like that. So that's something that I do want to throw out there, and is a reason why I question when they say to use only a quarter of the amount of dye for this. So I don't know if they're talking, say, about writ, um, or some other dyes like that. So maybe, I'm not sure. <laughs> but again, it's, it's worth thinking about. And worth remembering that a 1% depth of shade of true black is gonna be way darker than a ballerina pink. Uh, it just has to do with how the dye, the dye powders are mixed and what fillers and things are in there in terms of the amount of pigments. Uh, so that is what it is a measure of. It's not an absolute measure of the saturation of color that your eye sees. It's a way to compare the one color to itself as a form of measurement and recipe so you can dye colors again. Anyway, I'm now waiting for these to heat up. I do actually have the heat on lower for our front pot than the back just because the burners are the same size. Um, so I'll come back when I 
think things have warmed up and we can add the yarn. I am tempted to add the yarn at similar, like now, but I want to try to keep treat it as similarly as possible. I suppose it doesn't really matter if the wool has less heat. So yeah, those are just things I'm considering. The, the comparison though is not, I'm not worried. I'll be back in a little bit. Both pots are really steamy, so I'm now going to add the yarn. We're gonna start with our cotton friend, squeezing out the cree soak, which had no acid in it. And eventually, it'll be fun to try to dip dye with it. That isn't the goal here today. I'm not sure how fast or slow the colors absorb fun to try speckling and all kinds of other techniques on it. Uh, the problem, and this is our stroll, the problem with the dyelicious cotton is that it really seems to be more intended for weaving than for, say, knitting, in that it's really only available in very thin. I think the thickest one that I found um, at this stage is a uh, about a fingering weight and so this one right here is like a, a lace weight and then it goes even thinner to threads and I believe that they have fabrics um, that they sell as well so that is just worth keeping in mind and now I'm going to reduce the heat to low for both and we'll I'll also set a timer for 30 minutes and then we'll come back so while I am super excited to play around with different techniques on this Stylish's yarn, it's just worth keeping in mind that uh, we might be able to get some really fun speckles and other type of techniques. But if you like to knit with thinner or crochet with thicker cotton yarn, then you're, we're still limited when it comes to there. But I do have a whole playlist on dyeing cotton yarn. And so you can see all the different dye types I have tested and I've had some really good results with some types of dye. <laughs> but anyway, I will be back when the timer goes off. It's been 30 minutes. And let's see. Ooh! Wow! Okay, I'm impressed. So there's still some color in here, and I haven't stirred it since I first added it. But a lot of the color has cleared. Let's take a look. Okay, so in our wool yarn, the color has completely cleared. So um, this is one comparison. And don't forget, we have the same amount of dye per grams of fiber in both pots. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn off the heat on the wool pot since the color has all cleared. We're going to let that cool slowly. But I'm going to leave the heat on for the cotton and I'll come back in another 30 minutes. It's been 30 minutes and as a reminder, you know, we've cleared in this dye bath. Actually, let me zoom you in. So here is our stroll, our wool yarn, and even with the light, I am not seeing any pigment remain, and that one is cooling. And this one has had the heat off for the last 30 minutes. Our Dylicious cotton has been slightly bubbly, and there's a hint of pigment in the pot. Um, I'm moving it a little bit, just because sometimes with black, the pot can get a little bit stained. But, I mean, almost all the color is in our yarn. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the heat and leave the yarn in here to cool completely. Um, and we'll check back in before we go wash it and see if the cooling helps the rest of that color absorb. It's been a couple of hours and we are at room temperature. The yarn might be slightly tangled. Ooh, and we do have some tonal variation, maybe. I see a lighter spot. That is cool. But it looks like all the dye went into the yarn. So now let's wash it. And if this were, all right, I should follow my own advice and we will attempt to reorder the skein and fix everything once it's dry. It's always harder to do when wet. If this were regular cotton and not treated, we would start to see massive amounts of bleeding here. And I'm not seeing any bleeding, which, is amazing to me. Like it is so mind-boggling. 
Now, I still expect that the color is gonna be paler in comparison to the wool. Um, not, again, not because of the amount of dye, just because I think that is a feature of cotton. But I just added some dish soap and we will see if we see anything coming out. Maybe like a hint of something, but this is fairly consistent with what I might see with wool. And again, when bleeding, the times that you get concerned are when it's affecting the color in the yarn. And so I have a little bit, the water looks like a little dirty, but that's not bad. I will stick around for the washing of this. Now fiber reactive dyes will form a chemical bond with the fiber and so then you do not need, it's permanent and you can wash it with hot water. Acid dyes don't do that and so even with this treated cotton I would still recommend washing the yarn cold is my official recommendation. But I am, so I'm not going to hot, but I'm going to like a medium warm. Uh, the amount of bleeding we're seeing really is not bad. Uh, and normally in a video, I would say, okay, I'm gonna go wash this a few more times and then hang it, put it through the spin dryer and hang it up to dry. The reason why I'm sticking around longer this time, oh yeah, we're done. Um, the reason why I'm sticking around longer is just because this is so unusual. I mean, dyeing cotton with acid dyes is just wild to me. Absolutely wild. Let's do one more. And then we'll wash the other yarn. But yeah, I don't think, I don't think I've tried to dye cotton black. I definitely, eh, I guess I did with the Dylon hand dyes, but yeah, I mean, this is wild. But again, the things that I have to remember is that it's not like this is a treatment that someone at home can do. And I will review like how the cotton feels uh, in the conclusion. But the thing to keep in mind is that this is amazing, but you have to purchase the dyelicious cotton in order to dye it with acid dyes and then have something that is pretty much clear right away with minimal bleeding. But now uh, let's get ready to wash the stroll. With our stroll, we both didn't move it around very much and uh, we didn't pre-soak it very long. So I do see in here some lighter patches that didn't absorb as much color. Um, but that's not what we're investigating today. What we're investigating is how does the final color here on the wool, which to be fair, will be lighter. It, everything looks lighter when it's dry than it does when it's wet. So in fairness, um, that'll happen here with the wool as well. But, I believe that the color here will still appear more saturated than what we have in the cotton. Now, for wool, typically if you want a great true black versus something that maybe feels a little more matte black or dark charcoal, you probably want a 2 to 4% depth of shade, which would mean that you would want 2 to 4 grams of dye per 100 grams of yarn. And we just used one. And you can see that, I mean, it's really dark. So one does a lot, but you can get even deeper. Oh, and I'm not really seeing much of anything, but we'll do another rinse here because we did use the same dye stock uh, in it. Okay, I'm not, I'm not seeing any bleeding here. I would say that you can treat, or at least this looks to me, like you can treat this dyelicious cotton just like you would any other yarn that you could dye with acid dyes. Um, it does absorb the color a little slower. I don't know if it needs more acid. I don't think I'm gonna get like that level of exploration, but I think that I'm gonna wanna try some of my other favorite techniques on it um, just to see how it does. In particular, I'm interested to see how speckling with acid dyes works on it. Um, 
yeah, I think that that's something that would be really, really cool to see because getting speckles on cotton is really hard. But anyway, into the spin dryer and then we'll hang everything to dry. Out of the spin dryer, there's already a difference in the depth of color between the cotton over on the left and the stroll on the right. Um, and so I expect that this difference will magnify as they dry completely. Well, our stroll ended up a little more tonal than I intended, but there's no question that the color here is more pigmented than what we see in our dyelicious cotton. But there is also no question whatsoever that we dyed cotton with commercial acid dyes, something that I have repeatedly over and over and over said, you cannot dye cotton with acid dyes. You cannot dye cotton or other plant fibers with food coloring. And this still is true. This still stands. You cannot dye any cotton or cellulose fiber you get off the shelf at a big box store or from a bare yarn supplier with acid dyes or food coloring. You want to use fiber reactive dyes or dyes marketed for the dyeing of cellulose fibers. However, this is an exception to the rule because this yarn, however it's been modified or treated, it does work with acid dyes. Why is the color more pastel though? Because it still absorbed the dye and the colors weren't rinsing out or anything like that. But why, why is it different? And for that, there are two things. One, this yarn is only 50% of this treated dyelicious cotton. The other 50% is organic cotton, presumably that has not been treated. So that is one thing. I wonder if treating the cotton makes it weaker or something. I'm not sure why they would blend it, to be honest. Although you get a really cool heathered effect that I'll zoom in in a moment, so maybe that's why. The other reason is it's possible which I haven't exactly tested, but cotton like silk could require more dye to get a more vibrant color than wool. Uh, I find that there's a lot of times more difference between how cotton appears when wet and then how it appears when dry. And that difference might be greater with cotton than it is with say wool, which also does look paler when it dries, everything does. but. I, uh, yeah, so that's something that I don't know for sure, but my hypothesis is that it's about the blend, but also maybe to get a more intense color, you would just need more dye. Certainly the color that we have on the cotton is more even than what we have on the wool, but we do see a little resist. We've got some pale patches up by the tie because the tie was tied just a little tight. Uh, so there is potential for doing some really, really fun techniques with this yarn. But there, there's also a lot of things to consider. There are so many different techniques I would like to try with this dyelicious cotton. Um, I do have a number of more skeins of this and I have a cone. I want to try this with fiber reactive dyes uh, using either soda ash and acid. Uh, for the two different ways that you can use these dyes because you can use fiber reactive dyes like acid dyes on wool yarn. So is there going to be a difference with how this yarn absorbs dye? We do know that you do need acid with acid dyes, which should, see, should seem obvious that the directions did say you can dye it, quote, without additional chemicals. And so do they consider vinegar to be a chemical? I'm not sure but we will certainly explore this with other dye types. Unfortunately, these dyelicious skeins are a bit expensive. They are $9.50 for 50 grams. And while this is lace weight, there's over 400 yards in here, that's still pretty expensive when you consider that one pound of the same amount of fiber is only $26. So it's potentially worth getting it as a cone but it just depends on what the convenience of skeining it uh, means uh, to you. I do think that this yarn has potential for people who either can't work with or don't want to work with protein-based fibers, 
or uh, people who want to dye cotton but don't want to get um, a whole other type of dyes. So you already have a lot of food coloring or acid dyes and you want to play with cotton for some specific projects. Uh, unfortunately, the Dyelicious yarn doesn't come in anything that seems thicker than a fingering weight. Uh, so that is a downside to the Dialicious Cotton, but I think you can actually get it as, well, you don't call unspun cotton roving. Is it, do they call it silvers? I don't know. You can get um, unspun cotton uh, like this, which I have some of and plan to, of course, dye at some point. But let me also be clear that my recommendation of saying you can't dye cotton with food coloring or acid dyes still stands because this it's still cotton, but it has been treated differently in a way that this isn't something that you can do at home. Whatever this dialicious chemical processing of the cellulose fibers is, and I don't know <laughs> what that is actually, uh, that isn't something that you at home could do to your skein of cotton so that way you can dye it with food coloring. And so uh, I just want to be clear that this is specific for this specific treated cotton. If you enjoyed this exploration into this new fiber, <laughs> uh, please give the video a thumbs up and let me leave a comment down below of what other techniques you'd like me to try on this. I do have a cone and I have uh, six more 50 gram skeins to play with. And uh, yeah, I have a lot of ideas. And if these videos are entertaining, let me know what you think down below. And while you're at it, don't forget to subscribe and smash the bell to turn on notifications and all of that jazz. Uh, if you are a huge fan of Chemnitz and love the yarn I dye, I do have an Etsy shop, Chemnitz Creations. And in the shop, you can find over a hundred skeins of hand dyed yarn that have been featured in my videos. And if you go through the listings, you might even get some sneak peeks of what is coming up because sometimes I add yarn to the shop before the videos have even been published. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and thank you so much for watching.